Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Web Apps of the Future with React. This is CS50. My name is Neil. Uh, I'm a TF for CS50 and a sophomore at Harvard College. And uh, very, very passionate web developer. So I'm very excited to be talking to you today, whether you're here or at home watching uh, about React, which is, again, as I said, the future of web apps. So React is a web framework. And as, we, as I've been telling to some people here, a framework is just a set of tools you can use to structure and build your web app. Uh, and web apps are, again, websites that are interactive, like Facebook, Twitter.com, uh, Instagram.com, whatever. So Facebook is a web framework that was developed by Facebook a couple years back, uh, React is. Uh, it's been since been used in Facebook on their mobile apps, on the web app, Instagram. Khan Academy uh, is another prominent uh, early adopter of React. It's really been getting extremely popular. It's, if you ever use things like Angular or Backbone, this is, in, it, this is of the same family, but it has since far outstripped their popularity. It's the hot new thing. It's really, really huge. Uh, and so React is good not just as a web framework for building interfaces. It's good for building web interfaces. There's also a thing called React Native, which lets you build interfaces for Android and iOS and maybe other platforms in the future using just the same JavaScript code. You could use the exact same JavaScript code to, to render websites, to render Android apps and iOS apps. It's a very, very exciting time. It's a really, really cool opportunity. Uh, it's, it's really a, a universal web uh, interface development uh, tool. So it's a very, very important thing to know. And as I was telling people before, this, I think, is going to change how we build web apps forever. So it's maybe a bit of hyperbole, but I think it's, uh, it's a pretty good thing to know. OK, so what is React? React is a framework you can use for building interfaces. An interface is, again, a web page. Right? So here's Instagram.com, which uses React. Uh, React is built on the idea of components. A component is a HTML element on steroids. So an HTML element is like you know a button, it's a paragraph, it's a header, right? In Instagram, in Instagram will use these, but it will also use uh, components of React. React components are souped up HTML elements that have their own behavior contained within them. So as an example, we can have a time element, a time component, which will contain like the time stamp. We can have a profile component, which will contain the profile image and the, the name of the person. We can have a like counter, uh, which, if, which can count like, the number of likes. And like, if you click on it, it'll increase the number of likes. The comp a component is just a bunch of HTML code that has some functionality wrapped inside of it. So it's like a HTML element on steroids, as I said before. You can take these components, and you can put them together to make new components. In this case, a post component, which contains all of this stuff, uh, would contain time, profile, like counter, maybe the comment and maybe the image itself. And so web, app, web apps are just built by taking components and putting them together. right? An Instagram feed is nothing more than a bunch of posts one after another. And each post contains like the time, profile, light counter, and so on. It's kind of like building a house. right? You don't build the house from the top down. You, build, you take components. You take like the bathroom. You take the bedroom. You stick them together, and you have, a new, you have a new component. You have a new part of the house. So React is all built around this idea of components that are uh, that are interactive, that are uh, declarative. Like you just say what a profile is, and it renders it. Uh, it. They are composable. You can take a time and a profile, put them together, make something better, and they are reusable. So if I, if you have the source code for a post, you could embed that anywhere. You could embed an Instagram thing on your your own website. You can embed it in your in Facebook, for example, as long as it uses React as well. So components are like really, really, really powerful building blocks of the web that can be used anywhere and put together to make new building blocks. That's the very, very high level um, overview. So again, if you have any questions at any point about the philosophy of React or the coding, just stop me and let me know. OK, so React is cool because it has a different way of looking at how you build web apps. You've probably heard of MVC, uh, Model View Controller, in CS50 or whatever other programming classes you use. And most frameworks are built around the idea of MVC. React is not. React is built around the idea of unidirectional data flow, as seen by this, this chart or graphic here. Basically, you have a data source. And the data source will decide how to lay out certain components. And the components will then, when they, when they change, they will tell the data source to change. To use the Instagram example, we might have a list of post objects, like in a database or something. That's the data. And then our post uh, components will take that data and use that data to render a put like a, a thing on the screen. Right? That's what the arrow from data to component is. And then that same data is used to render a bunch of components. Right? 
in, me in Facebook Messenger, for example, which uses React, you might have a list of messages as your data source, right? And that would render not only the list of messages, but also the list of friends you have, you have the unread count. Maybe it'd also render the Facebook thing that is at the bottom of Facebook.com. This the same data is a single source of truth, and that causes a lot of components to be rendered. And whenever one of those components is changed, it goes back and changes the data source. You send a message, right? That changes the data source. You you read your message. You, you you read your message, so you set re un unread to zero. That changes the data, the data source. And notice that all of these have one arrow going back to the same data source, right? So you know, given a certain data set you know exactly what the page is going to look like. It's deterministic. You know, given certain data, what the page is going to look like. You know, you can predict how it's going to behave and how things are going to work when they're put together. And if I had a million components here, it would behave the same, right? You wouldn't have any weird interconnections. One data render a million components, a million components could go, could go back and edit the data. And so this is very nice for building composable, easily scalable web apps. You have one data source, the source of truth, that tells your components how to lay out the page, and the, the, the components will handle interaction, and if they want to change things, just go back and tell the data source to change. Make sense? So React is all about understanding how to build a component and how to make your component interact with the outside world. Uh, making the component interact with the outside world uses a, another technology called Flux, which is a framework that is added on top of React. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk more about given data, how can you render a component? And so React is really cool because you, you can use it with any backend you want. Uh, if you have like a Python backend, if your Python can spit out some data, React can render it. If your Node.js outputs some data, React renders it. Ruby on Rails outputs data, React renders it. So React is basically a, a, a web view, a, a front end with components for any data source whatsoever. And so going from data source to React uh, component is pretty easy. Going the other way is a little harder. That uses Flux, as I mentioned before. We won't get into that. We'll focus more on the data to component side. This way you can make cool, fun web apps. It won't affect the outside world for now, but that's another story. OK, so if you were here for my last seminar, uh, you'll know that all of the code for uh, today's talk is going to be at this URL here. Sorry, this URL here. And basically, we're going to go through four steps, maybe five, probably not five. We're going to go through four steps uh, of building a sample React app. And so all the source code for every step of the way is going to be right here. So if you're following along at home, feel free to peruse this code. If you're following along here, we'll be showing it on the screen, so don't worry about it. But if you're at home, feel free to visit this website. And uh, yeah, you should be able to uh, get all the code you'd ever need here. So it's a good cheat sheet as well for your future adventures with uh, React. Cool. So if everyone who's here, and even if you're at home, pull up this website. Uh, is.gd slash cs 50 react no, no capital, no underscore, no nothing. You'll see a page that looks a little bit like this. Um, this is a thing called CodePen. CodePen is a collaborative coding environment uh, with which I can write code here, and it'll be automatically sent to you. And so this way, I can write code. I can run code here, uh, for example. And if it reloads. See, I'm running JavaScript code on the page right here, and it'll automatically uh, render a web page with this JavaScript code. And so this is a way for us to try out code really quickly without, without having to like use our IDE or use our local machine or whatever. whatever. It's a very quick way for you to mock up and test out different, different kinds of code. So I'm going to be taking, uh, taking example code, putting it here. We're going to be wa working through it. Uh, and if you're at home, you can uh, pull this up as well. And uh, I've already installed React here. So you can just write your own code here and try it as a, your own playground. So yeah, if everyone could open up this uh, link here. Uh, Please uh, give me a thumbs up once you have it. Once you have it open. Cool, cool, cool. There's nothing here for now, but we will change that very soon. Okay, so uh, React is a JavaScript library, and as such, requires knowledge of JavaScript, which is the web programming language, and it's being used for other things now too, but primarily the web development language. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with that, read a site called jsforcats.com. It's wonderful. You can learn JavaScript in like half an hour. It's incredible. So give it a read. Uh, we also use a lot of HTML here because we're designing web pages, of course. So if you're unfamiliar with HTML, check out htmldog.com. Uh, uh, I think learning React is a million times easier if you already know the building blocks, right? If you know the, you know the components, right? It's easier to make a bigger component. That's React language for you. So go ahead and give these things a read. Uh, pause this video, give it a read uh, if you're at home, if you are not familiar with HTML or JavaScript. OK, so what we're going to do uh, is we're going to make a very basic flashcard app using React. It's going to have, we're going to have a 
a flash card, you can flip the card back and forth. And we'll also have a list of all the cards that we have. And if we're feeling ambitious, we might be able to switch between cards by clicking on them. But this is a, your bare bones of a very simple React app. And so this is actually not trivial to implement, but we're going to show that if you do this, it's very, very easy to extend it for other people to help you, on, help you with it. So we're going to go through four steps, starting from scratch to build this. OK, so the four steps, we'll start off with the first step. The first step is going to be building your first component. As I said before, a component in React is just an HTML element with stero on steroids, right? It specifies some HTML and some behavior. Uh, and it will specify how it will how people can interact with it, how it can have internal state, like a button will know like how many times it's been clicked, for example. Uh, and uh, it will tell it will know how to lay itself out. So let's go ahead and build our first component using JavaScript. So if the syntax looks weird, uh, that's because it, it kind of is. So let, so again, we're going to make a variable called app using the, the keyword let, which makes a variable. Let app equal react.createClass. React is a, is a library and has the createClass function. And this function is a bit of code that you can use to create a new type of React component. And so uh, react.createClass makes a component. And this component will be able to do stuff. The main thing you can do is, is render something, right? Render is a function. Again, if the syntax is not obvious to you, um, I recommend you go on JS for Cats and check it out. Is that zoomed in well enough? Cool. So every component needs to have a render function. The render function says, what do I print on the screen, right? Like a component is useless if it doesn't know what to print on the screen, right? So you need to have a render function. So in the render thing, you, can, you just need to return some HTML. And what's cool is that there's a thing called JSX, which is a extension of JavaScript that is used by React. It lets you write HTML inside of your JavaScript, uh, which sounds kind of weird when you first think about it, but it makes a lot of sense afterward. So we can do this. If you're familiar with, with HTML, we know we have a div, right, which is a gener general purpose container for stuff. We can return a div, and inside this div, we can put stuff. So um, let's say we want to render just a, a straight up flashcard for now. right? The flashcard, let's say, will have a question and answer. So inside this div, let's, let's print out a paragraph that says question. What is the ultimate answer to life, the universe? And then the answer is going to be, of course, 42. That didn't come up well at all. Yeah, the, so basically, um, you can literally write HTML inside your JavaScript, and this is going to be printed out into the screen. So let's try it out. So we have our component. We need to tell React to put the component on the screen. So react.render. So notice that we treat app like any other element, right? We, could, we write it as if it was an HTML element. Like instead of saying like img for image or p for paragraph, you write app. So app is treated like an HTML element. As I said before, it's an element on steroids. So you render app, and you give it a place to put it. And this is, a, this is how you can tell it where to put it. Um, I have, I've created um, a simple uh, div on the page called, uh, with an ID of page, and that's where the element's going to go. And we're not going to worry about the HTML. Basically, this is going to get put inside of this page uh, element that we have on the screen. So it runs this code, and it draws this thing on the screen. So here we are. We have made our first React component. So just as a recap, we we, gen we made a new type of component, right? That's what the react.create class was. And in that component, we told it what it should do. Whenever this component is to be printed onto the screen, it will print out the div with the two paragraphs inside of it. And then we did. We made a new, we made a new app using the, the angle bracket app notation. We told it to put it inside the page element. And so what it did, it created a new app from that template. And then it told it to go render it. So it said, OK, app, what should I print out? App says, go print out a div with two paragraphs inside of it. And voila, there's our div with two paragraphs inside of it. Make sense so far? So again, the whole challenge of React, just knowing how to make components, how to make the components work together. So now that we've made our first component, um, let's go back and make components customizable. Right. So you know how in HTML you can give your buttons classes? You can give your anchors an href. You can give your inputs a type, right? You can give more custom properties right, to all of your elements to make them more interesting. 
and React, you can do the exact same thing. So let's say we want um, let's say we want our card to uh, let's say we want our app to be able to render any card, right? Right now we just render a hard coded card. We know we there's only one card it can do. So we're gonna try and change this now so that we can give it. If we just give it some card, it'll print out the card. We want to try and make our components very general purpose, right? So this way I could email this to my friend and be like, whatever flashcard you have, just feed it into here and it'll do it by itself. And you can put it with other things in your own app. So first, um, let's break this up into two components. So we, we want to separate the card printing part from the actual app part. So what we can do is we can change this from app to card view, just a new name for the app. And we can make a new component called app, not to be confused with the old app. The create class, and like in HTML, you can nest elements. You can nest React components inside of each other. So in this in this render function, function return card view, and this is the exact same thing. See why it's the same thing? Instead of rendering just the app that has the div and paragraph inside of it, the app renders a card view, and the card view renders a div and paragraph. This is our first example of nesting elements inside of each other. Does that make sense? So again, we have a, we have a card view element. We have a app element uh, to figure that out. OK, so we want our card view. If you give it a, the card view a certain card, it will print it out for you, right? So first, we need to make a, car, a card. So let's make a card object. So let, car, let my card right, equal. If you're unfamiliar, this is just the, the notation of making an object in JavaScript. It's kind of like a struct in C. Uh, so we, we made our card. And so now we can pass this card as a, uh, a uh, property or as an attribute in HTML uh, terminology to our app. So we can do this, app card equals my card. You know how we can input? You do input type equals text or button class equals btn for bootstrap. Same idea. App card equals, you got to put braces here, app card equals my card. So this says, we have, a, we have this card object. I'm going to pass it as a property to the app, uh, to the, uh, app component. And this app component will, will be able to access it and do interesting stuff with it. So our app is going to be given a card. So for now, let's have the app just give the card to the card view itself. Because like, the app is not going to know what to do with it. So we'll just give it to the card view. So we'll pass it the same way, card equals. and so. Each, each uh, component can access the things that have been given to it, right? They can access the properties that have been given to it using this syntax, this.props.card, right? So what happens here is you have the myCard object. You pass it into the app using app card equals myCard. That card object is given to your app. The app can access it as this.props.card. It's, it's, it's kind of like how an image knows what its, app, its, its source is. This app knows what its card is, and it can do stuff with it. It can do computations. It can do make decisions based off of it. For now, it's just going to pass this.props.card onto the card view. Make sense so far? It'll make more sense now. So, okay, so now we're a card view, right? Our card view should, given the card, it should print out its question and its answer, right? Right now, we just printed out some hard-coded question and answer. We need to figure out, we need to ask the card that they gave us, what is the question and answer, and then print those out into the screen, right? So we can do this here. In render, we can first do equals. So what we're doing here is we're get we know that the card has been given to us as a property, right? It's been given to us as some input. Like, it's like almost like arguments to a function, right? Question, the card is an argument almost to this card view. We'll, we'll extract that and put it into the variable question. Extract the answer, put it into the variable answer. Props.card.answer. And now that we have these, instead of printing out that text, we're going to print out whatever they gave us. So this dot, so we're going to put out question. Answer. Let's see if this works. Cool. So let's step, let's step through it one more time, uh, just to be sure. So um, my card is a card object, right? And we're giving that card to the app. And the app is going to take the card and give it to the card view. 
And this card view says, if you give me any object, any flashcard object, I'll print out its question and its answer. Right? So what I could do is that I could send this code, the first like 10 lines of my code, to my friend. He could embed it in his own application. And as long as he did the same thing, like card view, like card view card equals this. Oh. As long as he created the card view and gave it the right information, he could render his own card. And so this way, it's a really cool way for you to build components that use each other, right? This card, I could publish this card view on the internet, and people would be able to use it. So basically, it's like it's like a, a, a one of the standard functions in the C library, right? It's a, it's a function where someone else has written it. You give it certain input. It'll produce certain output. You don't care how it works internally. As long as you give it the right input, it'll make the right output. And a card view can, can be thought of, a, compo can, a component can be thought of the same way. This card view is like a library function. If you give it some, some card as a property, it'll print out the contents of that card. Like if I change my card to, to instead be like, um, like, what is 5 plus 37, it will update accordingly. See, so just by changing the input, I get certain output. So you can think of components almost as functions this way, which you can put together. You get, a certain, you get input, like this my card as the input. You get output. In this case, output is the HTML. Make sense so far? Cool. So again, properties are how you can pass information into and out of uh, components. OK, so let's make this thing interactive. Right, right now, it's kind of boring. What is five? Like, like it, you, can, you can print stuff out, but that's all you all can do. So let's go back to the old question just for now. OK, so right now these components are boring because all they do, they get input, they make output, right? That's kind of boring. We want to have our components be able to have some kind of internal state, like remember something. For a flashcard, for example, uh, what, what kind of state might you want to remember for a flashcard? What, tempor what temporary status might you want to remember for a flashcard in the flashcard app? Yeah, right. So you might want to keep track of are you face up or are you face down on the card, right? On Facebook, for example, you would want to you would want to remember like where in the newsfeed are you, or like whose profile are you doing right now. On Messenger, like what te what text you type into the input box, right? If you refresh the page, it goes away, but you don't really care. It's just temporary. Yeah. Like a flashcard, like you can be seeing the question side or the answer side. Okay. Like a two-sided flashcard, right? Yeah. So like. So you want to have this idea of not only of properties, which is like inputs, but state, which is temporary, uh, what, where you are on the page, right? Again, as I said in Facebook Messenger, have like which person you're viewing, Facebook, like whose profile, right? This is only temporary. It, it's important to show the user what's going on, but re refresh the page doesn't really matter. So it's temporary state. So we call it state. So again, there's state and props. Props is input given from your data source. State is just like defaults. It's just like stuff that the user makes the thing interactive. So in our card view, let's have our card view. Uh, so what's nice, what we're going to do here, we're going to touch card view and only card view, right? And so my friend who got this, they wouldn't, need to they wouldn't notice any difference, right? They wouldn't have to change any of their own code, but they'd see their card view got souped up. That's a nice part about components. OK, so in our card view, let's try and keep track of whether we're face up or face down. In React, we, we do this by first specifying the initial state, right? Where does the card begin? So we have a function called, called get initial state. Get initial state function, and we return an object. This object contains um, some state, and the state is just a key value pair. You know, like in a struct, you have a key and a value, right? You have like name is a string, right? In this case, let's say front, front is true, right? This says that we have a state. Uh, w one component of the state is an attribute called front. It has to be true right now. So by default, we're in the front of the card, right? And we can change this as we flip the card. Make sense? Okay. So in render, let's, right now we're showing the question and the answer, right? Now what we should do is show the question if we're on the front of the card, show the answer if we're on the back of the card, right? This way it'll make the card interactive, right? So let's, let's try and do this here. We'll first just make a variable. And we can ask now this.state.front. Notice we, we access state the same way we access props, so this.state.front, right? If we're front, then text is this.props.card.question, right? If we're on the front of the card, we're going to try and grab the question from the card. Otherwise, if we're on the back of the card, what do we do? Yep, 
So text equals this.props.card.answer. But to notice we're using the state to make a decision, right? Because now the card will, now the component will look different based off how the users interact with it. So instead of printing out this, we'll just print out the text. Cool. So now, as we see, we, have, we see only the question. And if I change the state here manually to front is false, we get 42. So again, this component has its own state, like a button might, like a button knows like, whether it's been pressed or not. This thing knows whether it's on the front or the back. By default, it's on the front. And then if it's on the front, we'll print out the question. If it's on the back, we'll print out the answer. Right? So again, the information given is the same. It just looks different based on how you, how you uh, program it. So for example, face of messenger, even if you give the same data source, it might look different because the state is different. Right? You're looking at a different person's message. OK, so this is all well and good, but now we need to, let's actually make us able to change right, whether our card is front or back. Right? We can do this by adding a flip button, right, a button to the card that will flip the, button, flip the card if it's clicked. Right? So let's add a button here. This button. And this button will say flip. Right? And so right now, it doesn't do anything. Right? It, just, and, and yeah. it just looks nice. What we can do is we can add a click handler. On click equals this dot flip. And we'll define flip later, but basically on click is a function that is get, gets called when the user clicks it. So the button will remember, it will know when it's been clicked. When it's been clicked, it will flip the card. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like your pizza delivery guy, right? You're like, all right, whenever someone calls me, I'll deliver pizza, right? You register this listener. You listen for an event, you get called. And when, you, when, you, when the event happens, you do something. You get pizza. In this case, when you're clicked, you flip the card. And so we need to define a function that will flip the card. So we'll write that right here. Flip function. And so what do you think flip will do? Again, this gets called when we hit the flip, when we click the flip but button. What should the function flip do? Yep, so take whatever uh, this.front is, this, the front state is. Take the, take the front state. If it's true, make it false. If it's false, make it true, right? So let's try that. Um, you, can't, you can't change state just by doing this.state. You can't do this. You can't do that. Um, you have to use a function called this.setState. So you say this.setState, front, colon, this. Right, where again the exclamation point means the opposite, right? Like if this dot state dot front is true, it'll turn false. So we'll set we'll set the state from true to false. If it's false, we'll set false to true. Just notice that like we at we set and get slightly differently. And so let's try this. Bada bing, look at this. The flip button will now switch the front to back state. Right? And so here's where you see a little bit of the magic of React, right? Like we never told it to redraw the we never told it to re-render, right? We never told it to redraw anything, right? If you're doing it, if you're doing this without React, you'd have to like when the flip button is clicked, you'd have to tell it to manually, manually re-render, right? React is really cool in that it, if you give it a certain state and and properties, it will always render the exact same thing, right? And so when we when we ever we change the state and the properties, React just re-renders the whole thing, right? It it knows that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between state state and parameter, and HTML, right? So whenever either of those changes from like through set state, it will change how the thing, it will change how the page is re-rendered. And so basically React is like waiting for you to change something. Whenever it changes something, it'll re-render the entire page. And if this sounds inefficient, it's because it would be, but React uses a thing called a shadow DOM. Instead of drawing the page directly, it keeps like the virtual HTML tree in memory. You know, HTML is like a tree, uh, like a hierarchical data structure. It keeps a fake tree in memory. And whenever you update the page, it'll re-render, it'll draw another fake tree and it'll calculate what change it needs to make to the page to make the two trees equal. So basically, it like does it like virtually re-renders a lot, and then it only like changes the page in little tweaks as needed. So it's very, very, very efficient. So basically, React will whenever you you, cha you change something, it'll re-render the page virtually. It'll figure out what do I need to change to make the real page up to re reflect the the virtual page, and it'll do that. That's the virtual DOM. It's one of the biggest features of React. Does that make sense? Any questions? Yeah. So 
that still more, um, how does that compare, like, still to the MVC mm -hmm. that we talked about okay. before? Okay, yeah. The qu question is, uh, how does it compare to MVC? You asked about resources. Well, let's talk about how it functions. Okay. In MVC, you'd update the model, right? In this case, we'd have a card model. Mm -hmm. The view would have the, f the view button, the flip button, mm -hmm. and the controller would have the flip function, right? So the view would tell the controller to do flip, flip would tell the model to change, right? And so what you would have to, what you do in MVC is when you listen for the model to change and you re-render the, the view accordingly. Or you just have to like have the controller wait for the model to, to change and then pick and choose a part of the thing to change. And so if it's a big app, here we have one thing, but in a big app you have to like remember what to change in every single place. So it's a little annoying. Uh, and so React is nice because it has a shadow DOM. It can afford to just re-render the entire thing. You don't have to selectively like guess what to update, right? On Facebook, right? If you like get a new message, in MVC you'd have to remember, okay, change the thing at the top of the page, you know, the, the message icon. Also pop up a new window at the bottom. Also make a new thing in that window. Also like, play a sound. It's a lot of stuff going on at the same time. And so if you don't have the shadow DOM, you'd have to like do that manually. Because you, you can't re-render the whole page, you can't afford to. So you have to change each thing manually, which is really annoying in MVC. But so in order to be uh, thrifty, they selectively update the page, which is Efficient, but also annoying. In React, you, because of the shadow DOM, you get both things for free. It's efficient because of the shadow DOM. The bottleneck is updating the page. It's not doing the, it's not doing the, the tree manipulation. You get the efficiency. You also get the ease of use. Because you, you just re-render the entire page. Like, you just know, like, all right, what, the changes are going to be on the page somewhere. It might be in different places, but it's going to be on, on the page. Right? So you just re-render the entire thing virtually, and you might make a couple changes to the page itself. So again, in MVC, you, you, you would either have to choose between ease of use and efficiency. In React, you get both. So it's quite better. Make sense? Solid. OK, so let's, let's talk a little bit about step four, how we can embed components. So we have this right now, right? We have our cool little uh, button. We can flip it back and forth. Uh, and that's all it does. Let's say we want to have another component. Let's say our flashcard app should contain um, a list of all the cards that you have, right? So that means we should have another component. We'll maybe call it a list view, right? Let's make a list view that coexists with the card view. And this list view and card view will, like, co will, like, work together, and you can com com combine them to make our app view. So first, let's make a couple more cards, right? Let's say let cards, let cards. And just so I don't have to bore you with typing it, I'm just going to copy it from here. And so I'm going to not give it just one card. I'm going to give it an array of cards. OK, so first, the app's going to break for now. But all right, so we're going to give it, we're going to make this uh, able to handle multiple cards, right? Um, so first, we're going to give it not just one card, but an array of cards, like a list of cards. In this case, we have three of them. All right, so app is, so app is going to get um, a list of cards, right? Uh, and it's going to have to decide which one to show to the card view, right? The card view can only render one card. Right? But the, the app gets a list of all of the cards. Right? How do you think, so we need to figure out one card to give to card view. How, might you get, how would you guess we might be able to make a decision about which card to show? And to give you a hint, it's temporary, right? Like you'll be viewing a certain card, you refresh the page, you'll, you'll just go back to the first card. But that's okay because it's temporary. What technique might we use? Yeah, so we want to have state, right? We would use state in the component to figure out which card we want to get, right? Like we have a list of all the cards. We'll use state to figure out what the first card, second card, third card, and so on. So an app, so an app will get a um, how about the, the the get initial state function? Get initial state function return, and we'll just say active index is zero, right? So now our app has its own state. And so now in render, to figure out a card, let's just figure, we'll, let's go to the array and grab the thing at that index. So let card equal this.props.cards, this.state.activeIndex. So as you see here, the props and the state actually work together. 
So now that we have our active card, we'll call it active card, active card. All right, and let's see if this works. Um, card equal card, this stuff also cards dot state dot active index. Uh, oh, I have a syntax error. Yep, so now we are back to where we were before, right? Same old, same old program, except now we can support a list of cards, not just one card. And now again, if we change the active index, we can go from 0 to 1. And now we'll have a second card, and then we'll go to 0, right? So here's a new souped up version of our app. Okay, so now let's have a list view that shows all of the cards in your program, right? So we'll make a new, new component called list view. Let list view. Build React create class. All right, so we want to render a unordered list with a list item for every card, right? And so uh, we have a bunch of cards. We want one uh, list item for every card, right? We could do a for loop or something to make a new list item, but the way you do it in React, you use a thing called map. Map is a tool or a function you use um, that, for every item, runs some function, takes a return value, and gives you that back. So as an example, um, like if there are a one, two, three dot map function, and this is shorthand for a function, x arrow x times x, right? This says, for every number in one, two, three, take it, square it, and give it back. So what do you think one, two, three dot map x goes to x times x gives you back, given that this function is run on every element of that array. One, four, yep, 1, 4, 9, right? Because 1, you do 1 times 1, that gives you 1, so that's the first element. 2 times 2 is 4, that's the second element. 3 times 3 is 9, that's the third element. Make sense? So math is a technique you use in functional programming, which is a new style of programming, uh, to do something to every element in your list. And so this, this sounds familiar, right? We have a list of cards. We want to get a list item for every one. So we'll just use map here, right? We'll say let list equals this.props.cards.map. And so given a card, we're going to generate a list item with that card's content inside of it. Let's, let's just say we want to give out the card's question. So card.question. Right, so this list contains an array of, uh, of LIs, right, list items, right, where there's one list item for every card, and that contains the card's question. Make sense? Cool, so now let's, let's actually print that out. So we'll, um, we will return a UL. And inside that unordered list, we'll just stick the entire list that they gave us. All right, so now this list view works just fine. Is that any questions about the list view? You get a bunch of cards, you make a list item for every card, and you put them inside an unordered list, and you give it back. So now let's actually embed this inside of our app. So uh, we, we could do this. List view. What, 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 what argument do we pass to list view? What properties do we give it? Remember, if you give it a bunch of cards, it'll make the list view for that card, for those cards. So what, what will we pass here as the argument? Okay, so cards equals this.props.cards, right? And so the problem with this, this works fine. The only problem is that you can only have, uh, you can only return one top level element in render. So you gotta wrap it in a div. It's weird. So let's see if that works. Um, so 
does that work? There you go. So now we have a list of cards at the bottom, and then we have our card view itself on top, and that will flip between the two sides of the card. Now, does that make sense, how, uh, how I did that? Yeah, so again, we have two components. The first component prints out every card in the list. That's the list view. The second component prints out just that card, right? It'll, it'll remember, it'll, if you give it a certain card, it'll print out uh, information about that card, and what you flip. Um, back and forth. So um, if we want, we can try and talk about adding some new features to this. Otherwise, we can talk a bit more about the, f the uh, philosophy of React, or we can answer questions that you might have, because these are all of the core parts of React that I want to talk about. So we can go, we can go, we can go ahead, we can answer questions, whatever you, you want. The question is, can you use JSX with, job with normal JavaScript? The answer is yes. Uh, JSX is just a way of, it takes your, uh, let's see this. It takes your, your, HT your JavaScript that has HTML inside of it, and it compiles it into JavaScript that does not have HTML inside of it. So notice that, so notice here. This looks like you have like div and you have stuff inside of it. That compiles to JavaScript that like generates the same thing. Basically what I'm saying is that, um, JSX is just a syntactic, like it's a preprocessor for JavaScript, much like PHP is a preprocessor for HTML. JSX is a preprocessor for JavaScript that lets you put put HTML inside of your uh, your uh, JavaScript. And so, yeah, if you have the right transformer, uh, which is a thing called Babel, which will transform JavaScript, the right preprocessor, it'll let you do that. Usually, you don't really need to put HTML inside your JavaScript unless you're doing React, but, but you can do it anyway. Right. So the qu yeah, the question is about functional versus a thing called imperative or procedural programming. There's two kinds of programming popularly. One's called procedural, which is all about like doing commands, right? And one is functional, which is all about having functions and having input and output of those. React is a functional paradigm. C is a very procedural paradigm. And as an example, C, for example, you don't do this you don't do this declarative way of making of like making a program, right? You have to say print this, print this, print this change this data structure, print this. It's all about commands, right? In React, you notice there's not that many commands, right? It's all about having car like components you put together. They're like functions. You have like a function that you, like you have this function um, called, um, this function called card view, which is a function that has input and output, right? And so React is all about this philosophy of having, you have data, you pass it through this, this algorithm, and it'll output HTML that you just printed on the page, instead of you having to build it piece by piece. So to draw a metaphor to what I said before, right? you know how on Facebook, if you get a, you get a, a message, yeah. and you choose what parts to update, that's procedural, that's imperative. right? You're like, OK, I got a message. Let's change the count there. Let's pop a window here. Let's change the count there. Let's draw this here. That's a procedural approach. That's what things like uh, Angular, Boost, uh, Backbone, other frameworks use. React is functional. It's a very different way of thinking about things. It, you, it takes this idea of let's have functions or algorithms that will you give it data, it'll spit out what it should be, and the computer will take care of weighing it out. You don't have to handle it yourself. Does that make a little bit of sense? Is we, yeah. In a, in a functional language, mm -hmm. everything happens at once? No, it, it, things happen um, uh, in order. Like here, there's still order, right? But it's th it doesn't happen in order of like command, command, command. It happens in order of um, function gives you output, put that into another function, put that into another function, another function. If you do CS51, you learn functional programming. It's a lot of the scope of this. But basically, React, what makes React cool is not only the one-way data flow and the virtual DOM, but also this idea of functional programming. And functional programming is very easy for you to compose and make cool stuff out of, and it's very easy to think, to think about and reason about. So another good draw of React. Any more questions? Um, yeah. Why would you use let as opposed to var? Mm -hmm. So uh, the question is, why do you use let instead of var? 
Um, this is a thing called ES6, or ECMAScript 6. It's the new version of JavaScript. Uh, it, let is, there's a bunch of technical reasons, but let is a better version of, of var. Uh, it's how you declare variables. Uh, you can use let, you can use var. Let has a bunch of technical reasons. You can look it up later for why it's better. Uh, basically, ES6 has some nice new syntax and new features on top of the old JavaScript. So uh, we have like five minutes. I just wanted to talk about one more thing real fast. Um, if you have any questions, we'll talk about it after this. But just so this gets caught on camera, I just want to talk a bit about how you would actually use React in your apps. So if you go to, um, uh, if you go here, facebook.github.io slash react, Facebook. This is the homepage for React, uh, and it'll, it'll, so it'll show you how you actually use React uh, in your pages. Basically, it's a little complicated trying to install Rea React. It's not as easy as like you just drag and drop a JavaScript in there. You have to have your transformer set up, which will, uh, as I said before, turn your JSX into normal JavaScript. You have to have a thing that'll compile your ES6 to normal JavaScript. There's a lot of moving parts that you have to do. So there's a thing called Yeoman, um, yeoman.io. And this is a command line tool that'll help you scaffold out your React projects easily. So you can read about this later. But um, there's a, there, there are some tools that Yoan offers that let you create a, a React app with everything built in. Like it'll have built in uh, components built in, it'll have, it'll have your transformer built in. You have a lot of cool stuff built in automatically uh, using these things called generators. So uh, read about this if you like. Uh, just go on Yeoman, Y E O M A N, uh, and you can find generators like these. And with generators like these, you just like run a couple command line commands, it'll scaffold out an entire React app for you. It'll get all the manual, pipe, manual piping and grunt, grunt work done for you. And so this way you can just focus on just writing React. So basically, building a React app is, not tri is non-trivial, trying to just wire it all together, but there are tools that'll do it for you. So if you wanna make a React app, try it out, try doing it that way. If you just wanna experiment, you can try using this uh, code pen, because this code pen has all the React wiring. I've done all that work for you already. So if you want to make a, like a production like to release uh, React app, try one of these, um, these generators. If you just want to play around, uh, it's often worth just like try playing around on CodePen here. Sound good? Cool. So that's all I, ha that's all I have. Uh, again, uh, all the code and examples are going to be on this website here. So again, we didn't talk much about syntax of React. Uh, but to find all those little syntactical details, it's all going to be available. Uh, on this website here. So I'd recommend like take, take the first step, put it in, uh, in into your, uh, your code pen, try working on making the second step, third step, fourth step, and just see where you can get from that. Uh, any more questions, check out that page or email me. That's my email. Would, have lo would love to help you with any questions you might have about React. So yeah, that's all I have. Thank you all very much for watching or for attending. And if I'll, I'll take any questions you might have after this uh, now. So thank you all for watching.